Hi, my name is Kim Lee. I'm from Malaysia. I am working with an NGO which is working on the women's rights, migrant workers' rights violations in Malaysia. And I am also uh, working with a uh, foundation which promotes a uh, provide grants for students, university students, students to do community project on like poverty reduction in Malaysia. And then I will be moving uh, work with refugees with UN Interest here. I'm Katiana Speed and I'm from Canada. I'm a member of the climate and um, in Canada I'm working with NGOs that are uh, specifically working on a project to stop the Enbridge pipeline in the number of the internet. And what is the other word? I'm a little spoof of you guys. <laughs> Hi, I'm Deepak from Nepal. I'm right now I'm in the US. I'm an agricultural student. I'm doing my results on the soil science right now. Uh, when I was in Nepal, I was in love with uh, uh, NGOs. I like all the things that the Nepal has to do. And I guess that the US is all. But right now, I'm quite more focusing on the research things. I am Alexandra Mutas um finished my studies in environmental science for the past um, years in different parts. Of against the gold mining industry, gold mining lobbying, um, for example, we also made a campaign to offer um, activities on birthday uh, in Peru uh, every time I was there. Um, I currently work more on Change issues since about three years. I worked on permaculture activities. <coughs> I worked for indigenous tribes in the Amazon. So right now, since how year I'm not really working like like person. Cool. Great time. Uh, hi guys. I'm Alexandre from Climate and Paris, and uh, I'm I currently take care about the. Uh, I'm streaming and I'm the webmaster of the climate site. Great. Thank you all for doing that um, with me. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, can you use the microphone for the mic? Thanks. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is this okay? No, this is hard. Oh. Yes. I think it's just for the live stream, right? Okay, I'm gonna look goofy, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so thank you all so much for doing that. My name again is Jung Jung. Um, I work with 350.org, which is an international um, organization that works on climate issues. Um, I uh, got my start in organizing when I was in college. Um, I worked. I always thought I was going to become a surgeon, actually. I, I was pre-med all throughout school um, and worked with doctors um, most of my college career. Um, but I also started to learn a lot about coal um, and coal burning because I, I went to school in Pennsylvania, and that's where a lot of the energy came from. And as someone that was interested in public health, I thought um, if I could uh, work on policy, um, I can do more preventative health um, and like uh, prevent you know like hundreds or thousands or generations of kids from getting asthma rather than treat one person at a time. Um, so that's how I sort of um, thought of getting more involved into politics and I was a political science and pre-med in college. Um, and then I learned a lot about uh, our political system and um, how uh, in order for us to have real power, uh, in order for have people to have real power, we need to organize. Um, and we 
uh, and it doesn't happen every four years or every two years when there's an election cycle, but it has to be a constant building of grassroots power. Um, so I've worked on um, campaign level. Um, I've worked on uh, the Beyond Coal campaign with the Sierra Club. I worked on um, GE labeling um, in New Mexico. I worked to fight fracking here in New York. And now I am um, supporting fossil fuel divestment campaigns um, in the southwest part of the US, so in five states. Um, and also, uh, People's Climate March organizing and coordinating all the campus, all the college campuses across the country. Um, so that's just a little bit of my background. Um, but I wanted to start off with telling y'all a story. Um, because, so like this session is called um, Successful Grassroots Campaign, like Activism and Advocacy, Successful Grassroots Campaigns and Public Actions. Um, but an important thing to know is that public actions um, don't mean much if it's not part of a larger strategy. Um, and the strategy has to be part of a larger campaign to achieve a specific goal. So I want to tell you a story about um, Otpor. Have you have you all heard of the of the civil youth movement in Serbia in the 2000s? Okay, okay, some of us. Great. Um, if I miss anything, in Serbia. supported by uh, business leaders, party leaders, um, and like other government officials. And then below that are the journalists and lower, uh -oh, uh, lower government employees. And then it's civil society. And Milosevic wanted um, civil society to believe that power came from him, and it trickles down. Um, but what Otpur realized was that, um, that instead, it, power looked like this. Milosevic was right here. He was at the very tip. Um, and civil society actually had power. But their complacency was giving power away. And um, you know, like when you're, like if a triangle that looks like this is not going to stay up for very long, um, and they thought that there were pillars that were supporting the structure, which gave him the power. And there were all of these different pillars um, that they had to break down in order for them to be successful in their goal. Um, and so this was the central strategy. So in every mass training that they did, they always shared what the central strategy was. Because you know how you're going to get there, then the things that you do, so the tactics and the actions, um, have to fit into the strategy. OK. Feel free to like hop in with any questions if you have any. The story isn't over yet. Um, so, so some of these posts and media. And I'm going to dig into the example of what they did with police to break this pillar. 
um, they knew that they couldn't they couldn't fight back, right? Because then the media would paint them as terrorists or um, as like radical kids. Um, so what they did was in all their public actions, it the they used nonviolent tactics. So mass marches, mass rallies, and they didn't retaliate with the police. Um, and so and then the second step was um, taking pictures of their wounds, uh, blowing them up, and then putting them in front of the houses of the cops that did that did that to them. And so they were shaming their family members and their friends and their neighbors. That was the creative tactic that they used. Um, take a picture of their wounds, so like any cuts and bruises that they had. Um, and then they also built relationships with police, right, because you can't just do one tactic, you have to do a series of tactics that fit into the larger strategy. Um, so then they built good relationships with commanders, so that ultimately when they had enough power, um, the commanders actually sent the police out of town when uh, the protesters overtook parliament, in the parliament building. Um, cool. So that's strategy and uh, tactics. Um, and so the strategy was to weaken compliance, right? Great. Um, okay. So now we're going to go into, does anyone have any questions about so this is one theory of, of um, building power and using strategy in a campaign. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, this is coming from George Lackey from Training for Change. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it was, they were successful in 2000 and it started, I think, in the mid to late 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or three to five years, but yeah. Great. Um, okay, perfect. I think this is going to be a really good segue. Um, so who could identify what the goal of their campaign was? Like, what was their goal? What was that? Yeah, to tip over the pyramid. Um, so when I am working on a campaign, um, this is how I think about strategy and planning. So the goal was to tip over the pyramid, right? But what do you think the vision was? So the vision, um, the way that I define vision is it has to be big and bold and radical and transformational. Um, right. So with to tip over the government, would you say, or the regime? That is the, why is that the goal? Yeah, great. So, like, let's actually write some of those things down, right? So, to create a better society. Like, if you were in those shoes, like, what else would be your vision? Freedom, yeah. Yeah, so to have a voice. Well, equality. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So these are like big and beautiful and bold, right? And like pretty radical for like the society that they were living in. And then the goal, which was the concrete thing that they were hoping to do, was to like 
topple the pyramid. Um, so the difference between the goal and the vision is that the goal is a, just a tiny little piece of that vision because other groups and other people are working on different goals because not only do you have to fight the bad, but you also have to build the new. Um, and so like other groups, right, we're working on like on, um, on, on like what would come after. Um, and Oxford did actually do that a little bit. Um, they became their own political party. Um, cool. Does it, do people get the difference between goal and a vision? Great. Um, so then this arrow right here is the strategy. Uh, and the strategy, like I said, is the how to the goal. Um, so, for example, if we were going to tip over a boulder over a cliff, um, there are, what, what are some ways that we could do that? It's like a huge, massive boulder. What are some ways we could tip it over? It's pretty, it's like not a trick question. <laughs> so a huge boulder, yeah, so you can push it, right? But you would probably, okay, you could, yeah, push it. You can need a lot of people. What are some other ways that you could tip over the boulder? Yeah. Yeah, you can like build a device to like move it over. Um, so in that case, the goal would be uh, to like tip the boulder over, and then maybe the vision is that there's something bigger than that of why you're doing it. Maybe because like you want to build a house there and you want more land. I don't know. Um, but we have two different strategies, right? One is to push it over. And then the second strategy is to build a device to do that. Um, so these lines are the tactics. It's like the things that you're actually going to do to implement this strategy. So if you were going to um, like push it over, what would you have to do in order to make that happen? Yeah, you got to call up your friends. You'd be like, hey, I like really need to... I like need help moving this boulder. Can you come help? Right? So like need to bring people. If you were to build the device, what would you need to do? Yeah, you would need experts and materials. Yeah, then you need to fundraise. Wow, it's so really hard. Um, you could just bring people together and then it's so easy. Uh, right, so then there's two different strategies and two different types of tactics to get to your goal. Um, which is why when we think about public actions and tactics, they actually have to fit into the strategy. Because if, um, like for example, if, um, like if you knew that your target or the person that you were trying to influence was like pretty with you on the issue, right? You wouldn't want to like do a sit-in right away. Right, and like put pressure on him, because that's a tactic that you could use, but it might not be the most strategic tactic. Okay, cool. Um, so I could go on, but I want to do a time check and see if we're okay. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm wondering if you can turn to your partner for five minutes and brainstorm uh, different tactics that you would do for grassroots campaigns. So maybe it's just a kick the ball off and rolling. Um, does someone want to shout out a couple, like two, like one thing that is a tactic that you would use in grassroots organizing? Door to door. Yeah, so going door to door, door knocking. That's one tactic. Cool, so we're going to um, turn to our partner for five minutes and then we're going to come back and then put all the tactics on the board.
Maybe we can go around and um, to, like say your favorite tactic that you have, and then if that's also on your list, to like do sparkle fingers or snaps or something. We'll let him come in first. Great, no worries. You can have a seat. Uh -huh. Although, um, although I do love my 
digital friends. Lobbying. Great tactic. And collaborating with the directory that you begins it first begins with education right you like educate um, and you build your base and so what what are some things that would go into that what are some things social media stuff for um, 